<laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, my Candid Conversation series. This is episode 66. And uh, before we get into this conversation, I know you guys are examining you know, the, my surroundings. And uh, I need to let you know exactly what happened and um, why entrepreneurship is so great. So last night, um, right before I got in the shower, I get a message that we're going to be switching our times for my son's practice. And so I spent about literally 37 seconds deciding and contemplating, am I going to not go to practice? Am I going to call Q and postpone this conversation? Or am I going to figure out a way to make it work? And within 37 seconds, the, the decision was made. We're doing the podcast in the car. I have my mobile Wi-Fi. Like the, nothing is stopping this conversation from happening today. So um, I'm super excited to be joined um, by my homegirl, uh, Miss Q Broden. How are you doing today? Awesome. I would have been in the car with you. This was about to be a twin thing. It was about to go down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you can tell about your your little experience too. Um, I want to give you a chance to introduce yourself because like I get fired up and I get energy from the idea that I'm about to talk to you, which speaks I'm not that type of person. Like I'm not like a super, you know, <laughs> just always hype individual, but I know you bring it every single time um I see you. And so I want the people to feel that energy, but first I want you to introduce yourself and uh, tell people a little bit about what you do. How are you, family? Thanks for having me. This is super dope. Uh, my name is Kiana Q. Broden. We're family, so everybody can call me Q. Um, I am actually the owner and creator of Cooking With You and The Kitchen by Q. Um, I created this entire brand with the purpose of showing people how to eat to live. That's our entire mission. We want to show people how to eat to live by introducing more plant-based food as their everyday living. And to me, that's from every aspect of life. So that's what we want to do. And we want to make sure we do it by any means necessary because it's something that's not really pushed in the black community at all. It's never like we want you to show you how to eat better so that you can live longer, happier, healthier lives. Um, and in my brain, I just want to make sure that the things that I learned going through becoming sick and want and healing, um, I wanted to make sure that it was like transparent for everybody so everybody can learn um, and grow the same way. So tell us about your your story. Um, and I don't think I've got a lot to, a chance to talk to you a lot about this, but let's let's start with like the idea of creating like a literal kitchen. Like if you go into her place, it feels like an actual kitchen and it's just filled with like love and happiness and just you just feel like a better person when you walk through the door. So where, did that, where did that vision come from? Where did it start? Like, tell us about all that. It's so psycho. So like for me, I was not, you know, the uh, a, a chef. I was, I did mortgages. Like right now I could write a mortgage for you right now, front, backwards, close you, read your pa That's what I did. Okay. But wow. sitting at my company, at my company, the president of my company was doing a speech and, for, and I zoned out. It was so weird. I had this entire vision of this kitchen and I'm like, okay, God, I don't really know what you want me to do with this sink because I'm in a meeting. Like I was working at United Shore. I'm like, I do mortgages, so I don't really know what you want me to do with this kitchen. But I know when I get visions from God, it's like, these are your instructions, march. There's no, and I'm very faith-based, so people know me. I'm like, God, family, food is how I roll. Right. So when I get this vision and you tell people, and some people are like, yay, and some people are like, girl, you don't cook. You about to go to color <laughs> school. And I'm like, no, the Lord didn't tell me I need to go to color school. He said, find this place. So I sat in the meeting and draw, I drew out an entire the building. Like I drew it out on paper. Yeah. And I was like, the whole purpose of it was when people come to my house or think about when they come to your house, the kitchen is the place that is like the most comfortable place is where everybody goes and it makes you feel like you're completely at home. Everybody has great conversations around the kitchen counter. And I wanted the kitchen to feel like it was the heart of the home, but I wanted it to be like the heart of Detroit. They nice. wanted it everywhere else. Like they wanted it in every suburb. People were like, listen, we'll, we'll pay for you to have this if you just build it here. Like dope. you don't have to pay any money out your pocket. And I was like, no, it's supposed to be in Detroit. And you know, I was born and raised in Detroit. Like I'm DPS girl, I'm DPS. Right. Right. So I want I couldn't find a place. I probably went through three or four places before I even found the space for the kitchen because people were giving me big spaces. And it's okay to have this big idea, but know where it's supposed to be. Cause sometimes people go out and they go all out. But the reality right. for me, like it was only supposed to be a kitchen 
It's not a restaurant. That's what I kept saying, even though that's what it has turned into. But it was supposed to make you feel like you walk in, you're at home in your kitchen. And when you sit down, you're going to get this good, amazing, tasty meal. And it's healthy because people don't put healthy food with tasting good ever. Right. It's like, if it's about right. to be vegan, like this is about to be, I don't know if I'm going to smash this. This might be a little nasty. This is leaves or something. But it's like, right. boo, you know what I mean? So I did that for five years. I walked around with that post-it note, but I did every single thing to get the post-it note from like paper to fruition. So I applied for every grant you can get. I talked to people. I walked into so many um, architect offices and people were looking at me like, who is this girl? <laughs> you don't have no money, girl. And I don't, you're not even a chef. So I don't even know. People are like, what? nobody knows what this. Nobody wanted to fuck. You had no cooking background. I cook, I cook. You know, I cook at the crib. You cook okay, with okay. All my life. You know, I cook. That's what I do. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. But I wasn't, I was never like this, I'm gonna go to culinary school and I'm gonna kick you. <laughs> no, I was just like, I need people to understand like you can cook easy, it can be amazing, it can taste good, and you can grab it in the hood. Hello? Right, right, right. <laughs> and like, you know, it, 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 it worked out. I just, I'm, I'm good at following directions. I get the orders, I'm like, all right. And people were like, this is crazy, we don't know what it is. But then it was like, now everybody loves it. And they understand. They're like, this is a crazy vision. But like, this is so amazing that you saw this. Right. For five years, I've been doing this. That's so that's so incredible. Um, So tell us a, a little bit. Um, and this, I'm, I'm sure this will serve as really good practical value for people that want to go from scratch. Because you literally went from like, yeah. yeah, you went from zero to where you are right now. So tell us a little bit about the process in between in terms of finding a building, getting like all of your, your paperwork in order, some of the things that you may have challenged, you may have faced with the city, like some of your biggest challenges. Tell us about zero to actually opening the doors and cutting the ribbon for your location. Like literally this is a, if I were to be perfectly honest, everybody like this is like, like it is like determination. It is hardcore perseverance. It is being told no a million times and being okay with it. It is not having people to back you or the people that said they were going to have your back from the beginning disappearing. Like you have to be willing and what you like to be willing and ready to like, it's like by any means necessary. Like for me in my head, if I'm going to either do what God say or what people say, that's how I think. And I'm like, I'm not going to help you. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go over there. And if that means we separate, we separate. Funding, Right. If you, business plans. I went from never doing a business plan. I've done a resume, <laughs> but you have to like write a business plan because nobody's going to give you money if you don't have a business plan. Your finances right. have to be in order. Um, and when I say me going from scratch, it went from like not even having the credit or the money to do it to like I'm gonna get this popping and I'm gonna show y'all. Right. It's, it's really a leap of faith because I worked my job. I used my money. I use every dime of my money. I know a lot of people, you know, Gary says it's clouds, it's clouds of dirt. Like you have to be okay to get grimy. And sometimes you're going to work hard. You're not going to go out with your friends. You're not going to hang out. Like I have a family. It was like family and that's it. Like everything mm -hmm. else, there was no like meet me at the club. Um, everything I did, I worked like extra jobs to right. like make money to, to, to get the building. Um, finding people to let you have a building when you don't have the history. Yeah. The psycho. Yeah. Uh, my build out was, was like six hundred fourteen thousand dollars. Wow. And I only uh, hello. So wow. you looking at who had that? Who? What, you, <laughs> the bank had marched in, and I was like, "Where's all this money about to come from?" And it, right. it started up. It was only going to be two hundred thousand dollars. It was three six hundred fourteen thousand dollars. I only got four hundred thousand dollars in loans. The rest I. I went all in because if I who's gonna bet on you? That's what you have to like in your head say. If you don't bet on yourself, why should anybody else bet on you? Facts. I use my phone, okay, super facts. I every I worked. I took care of my house, my family because I'm married. I, I'm 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 a wife. I have three kids. Mm -hmm. It was like work, work, stack your bread, and mm -hmm. I don't think people do that or enough or understand like you really do have the money. It's just what do you choose to put your money toward? You gonna keep yeah. your hair done? You keep your nails done? You gonna keep buying purses? Or and I'm not that person. I don't care. You know, I, the mm -hmm. Salvation Army is real good to me, honey. You can catch me. However, it doesn't matter. But right. my building was going to be 
I wanted to make sure it was operating in excellence. People don't get that, but they have to have their money in order. You have to have your paperwork in order. You have to file taxes. Like there's no running around it. There's no running around it. Like keep my paper was in order from the time I created Cooking with Q. And Cooking with Q was only a place where vegans and meat eaters could coexist. I only created that platform because people were asking me so questions about how did you get sarcoidosis? How did you heal yourself or your sarcoidosis? All this came from that. Like none of this would ever even exist if I didn't say, well, let me make a website so I can show people how I got better. Because they say black women are common to have sarcoidosis and nobody knows. That's an autoimmune disease. It was killing me. Didn't right. know it. But right. I shared it. Share. You have to share. You have to give. You give everything because you never know who you might help. Because me helping people, corporations were like, can you come teach at our company? Because if you teach at our company, we get a discount on our health insurance because you're teaching our employees how to eat better. Who knew? Right. Who knew? Then it got so big where it's like I was doing my classes on lunch. I was working at my job, going to lunch, teaching at corporations, coming back to work and working wow. over. Now, and this is happening before the kitchen existed. Yes. I started right. cooking with you in 2015 on paper because for me, I was like, if I'm going to start it, God, I have to do it the right way. Because that's right. what people like, like to start their business, but they don't want to get their paper in order because it costs, but it takes money to make money. Right. You got to be able to invest in yourself. If you don't invest in yourself, like, yo, why do you think somebody else is going to invest in you? It's yours. <laughs> Super fast. <laughs> like, hello. But like that, that was that. It would start the company, make sure the paperwork is in order, file taxes. From the day I started my company, I, it, was, it was a real business. I, I'm not afraid to pay taxes because I don't know why people run away from it. Like, how do you think you're going to make some right. more money? Right. <laughs> like, they're not going to give you no more money. Girl, they don't see what you're doing with money. Right. Keep your money in order. And then start making connections. Nobody knows you exist if you keep it to yourself. We live in a world where everybody thinks I have to keep my idea to myself because if I don't say something, somebody else is going to take my idea. What you can't take is you can't take Q. We'll just <laughs> make another one. Make another one. You're going to take my idea and make another one. But you can't do me. So you know what I'm saying? So right. I share and I tried to make the connections. I started doing networking. I wanted to see how people were getting funding in the city of Detroit. I knew I wanted the building in Detroit. Motor City Match. You have like the Invest Detroit, you have the Detroit Development Fund. There, there's grants all over, but the thing about the money, getting the money, you have to put in the work. Nobody's just gonna throw the money at you. The money is there, but you have to actually make it real. You might have to fill out some grants. That might be hours. That might be you not going to the club for like a month. <laughs> Right. I was paying people to do my business plan. And then it was like the worst thing I'd ever done because it was like, what a waste. Like you gave money away. And when right. you work for that money, you're like, no, I'm not paying you to do this anymore because you didn't even, you didn't write it how I it's my idea. I right. wrote the plan out. I got it edited and then I submitted it and it worked. Yeah. Makes so much sense. Like it's it, and that's what it is. I just think the hard work you have to be able to put in the work. Like it's not going to come to you. Like you have to put in the work. And I feel like right now the, the kitchen is at ground level. Like it is just so it was never supposed to be a restaurant. It was never yeah. supposed to be. <laughs> it was a demonstration kitchen. I wanted to show people how to do classes. But to yeah. me, when I built it, I built it with the expectation like, you're going to keep your idea here or you're going to want this to be worldwide. Right. So I, I had it. It excellent. You know what I'm saying? I love it. Um, so tell us a little bit about the sickness. Like, I want to know what you were putting out with that information that you were sharing with people that they were gravitating towards so much. So when I found out I had sarcoidosis, I was like, I think I, I don't even, I think I rolled over. I was like rolling over on 30. Like I'm, I'll be 42 this year. Okay. <laughs> like no crap. But I'm just saying, right. I, they told me I had sarcoidosis. And what they told me was I'm going to have to take steroids three times a day. So in my head, when they said that, something was like, what are the things that happen if you take steroids? Y'all always say athletes shouldn't take it. Don't take like, so why would you want me to take it three times a day? Like, I'm missing something. And right. it was supposed to help my lungs stay open so I could breathe because I was having like mad trouble breathing. And at the same time, I was allergic to dairy. Okay. So, imagine you bleed. First off, my family is like blackity black, black, black. We from South Carolina, you know, mac and cheese is the extra cheesy. It, you know, everything that was clogging every artery, we was eating. You know what I'm saying? For the rooter to the tutor. Right, so, right. I had to figure out like, now nah, I can't have all this stuff because I have one choice. The choice is you either live or die. 
Like if you make things very simple, don't put a pile of ice cream on a pile of poop. Like no matter what, when the ice cream up, it's still poop. Right. <laughs> Life or death. So for me, it was like, you can take these steroids three times a day, or you can figure out what you can do to help your body heal itself. Mm -hmm. So for me, doing the research, you know, I graduated from Google University. Right. Me so, too. Me okay. Too. So uh, everything was pointing towards plant-based. And I was like, plant-based? Like, I'm like, are there even any vegan black people? Like, it was just so awkward to me. Yeah, like, this, is, this, is 12 years, this is 12 years ago. Yeah, I'm like people wasn't yeah. even people didn't know what vegan was 12 years know, ago. No, and like all honesty, like vegans aren't always the friendliest people to mm -hmm. people who are not vegans. Like it was either you're vegan or you're not. And I'm like, so if I go vegan, I'm supposed to diss all my family because they eat meat. I'm supposed to not cook for them no more. Like, I don't know what that want me to do. Right. So, my brain wanted to um help people understand, like, I I did it. I, I did I did a 30 day no meat, no dairy. Like after 30 days, I had a cough that sounded like I smoked like 8,000 packs of cigarettes. Dang. Legit. Cough started going away. And I was like, who sent you? Where did this come from? Okay, saints, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> then when I got to the 60-day mark, because I felt so good, I was like, I'm going to try this. I'm, I'm going to do this again. See what? I would have rashes. Like I had rashes everywhere. It looked like I would have snake skin. You know? Mm -hmm. Black people have you, that, that. That's not, that's just uh, you got eczema. It, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. It started disappearing. You can't even tell I have rashes anywhere. Like it was everywhere. There's no rashes. I would have rashes all up my arm, everywhere, everywhere. There's nothing. Wow. So my brain said, "What the heck is in the food? It is something in what we are eating, and nobody's telling us." Right. That's triggering all these things. But nobody knows because nobody talks about it. Just like I didn't know sarcoidosis is common in black women. Like, right. it's so common. Now, what is sarcoidosis? Like, I, I've never heard of this. Like, what is it exactly? Ernie Mac died from his sarcoidosis. It's an autoimmune disease. And okay. you you do not take care of it. It can It's like a silent killer. People okay. have it and don't even know they have it. They say it's so common in African-American women. It can affect, it can affect different... Um, different organs. So for me, it bothers my lungs. A lot of people, it'll bother their lungs um, and you get these little holes okay. that fill. And like, it's all, it's like having a 24, it's like having a 24 hour sinus infection, cold. I always had a sinus infection, I always had a cold or pneumonia. Like okay. if you get a cold, I'm gonna end up with pneumonia. Got it. Cause my white blood cells are not, you're supposed to make more when you get sick. It was not, it's, it's creating not. more sickness. So it's like, it's like pissing your whole life off. So yeah. for years, that's what I dealt with. And I didn't know so many little things that they said, like your vision, you had issues with your vision, you had skin rashes. They only found out because they did a biopsy. Like they did a biopsy of my lung. That was the first time I ever been put to sleep in life. And I was like, Lord, please wake me up. Father God, please <laughs> praise him. I came back. Yeah, I came to him. Okay. But that's the only reason they found out. That's the only reason they found out. They did a biopsy. Got it. It's crazy. That is so crazy. So, so you start, you start this mission to fix yourself on your own. Like you just decided, you know what? I'm not doing steroids because that's what they told me to do. I'm going to go to Google and figure out what is my best, my I best remedies. I researched everything. I was at the library. I was trying to figure out everything. I wanted to just figure out what is the holistic approach? Because what I remember is when I was younger, if we got sick, my Grandparents, my great grandparents, great great grandparents, they never were like, go to the doctor and get some medicine. They went outside, grabbed something from the backyard, roots that were from the ground. Right. My stomach hurt. Let me get the roots, boil it, drink this. Don't matter what it tastes like, drink it. All I knew was my stomach felt so better. Right, right. But what happened to that? Now we're in a society, we're in a society where it's just easier to just give you a pill, and the pill is what makes people money. So in my head, I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this because other people need to understand that you can heal yourself without bogging yourself down with medicine. And it's not that I don't like doctors and I don't like their, you know, because you have to, uh, I tell people that you have to go to the doctors so you can understand what's wrong with you. You don't know what to research if you don't go and find out to just sit around with the sickness and not know. It almost hurts. Like it makes my skin peel when people say they're sick or I'm a diabetic, but you don't, you're not eating to help yourself live. That's like, you chose a death sentence. And why would you ever want to do that? Right. Right. That so makes like sense. like it, you think it is, but it's just not, it's not what people do. Okay. So, so this story is starting to make so much more sense because now you are, 
going to these places to give people this information of what basically changed your life. And you're doing this so much to where you're like, okay, I need, I mean, maybe you didn't think about this like this, but it's like you need a, your own consistent place and platform so that you can make this information easily and readily available for anybody who needs it. Literally. Which is why this vision for for this kitchen just just was presented to you Literally, one day. That was, already, here. Out, I was already, I was already, You're already doing it. I was already doing it. It's like you, I'm already doing the work. And I think people don't, that's one of the things that people have to understand. Like God tells me all the time, everything that you were supposed to be, you were already created with it. I gave it to you. You've had it since birth. There's nothing different about you from then and now. Everything yeah. that you're supposed to be, you already have it. What is the thing? That was the one thing I knew I knew how to do since I was little. Cook. That's what we do. That's what I learned from my mom, my mom's mom, my mom's mama's mom. Everybody cook. I could cook. That wasn't the issue. But now realizing how to change the way that we cook, because we cook because somebody taught us that. Like a lot of stuff that we do is all because somebody taught us. It's not because like we did the research and we figured it out. It's because right. I cook these greens this way because mama took me this and mama's mama taught me that. It's like, right. but nobody was like, why do we eat this way? Like why? Like right. we ain't slaves no more. So we don't have to eat like slaves. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, right. actual data. Now, how do I heal myself? Like everything matches something. What can I do if I'm having heart issues? What foods are good for my heart? If I'm like, and half the time our body tells us this stuff, we just don't, we don't, listen to it to tell us yeah i'm craving chocolate i need to have chocolate no you probably don't have enough iron saint like what you what you doing <laughs> like, it's, it's simple stuff like that but like we don't mean when i want chocolate chip cookie so bad because that literally happens every day yeah <laughs> it's not even that you have to have chocolate chip cookies our cravings are just our body telling us stuff that we need yeah like across the board whether we want to choose to hear it <laughs> all right but for me, it, it made me feel so much better. And then all I wanted to do was like, you know, you'd be like, I want to shout it from the mom top. I just wanted to tell everybody. So I was like, people need to know this. Like, what is the good of me knowing this? And then I die and don't pass the information on. That sucks. Right. That meant I could have helped somebody and I chose not to help somebody. Like, what if this guy got my only purpose here is to make sure I show people how to eat to live? And literally verbatim, like, that was my thing. Like, you're, you're supposed to show people how to eat to live. If you keep focusing on eat to live, you will always prosper. But if you take your eye off the prize and stop focusing on eating to live, it will not work. And so, you know what? You ain't got to tell me nothing twice. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Hey, look, if you're just joining in, hopefully you're not just joining in. But if you are, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm picking it with Q. Uh, she is dropping some serious facts and information about uh, eating better. In uh, her story, if you got questions for her, please drop them in the comments. We'd love to uh, include you in this conversation. Um, so since the door is open and uh, it's been, you said five years now, right? Well, it's been five years since, since, since you started, started the plan. How long has the doors actually been open to the, to the place? We just made our first year anniversary on June 3rd. Oh, wow. wow. So, so last year, I, I left my job. You know, it's a big, a big jump when somebody was like, yeah. I'm going to quit my job. I was like, oh, my God, I had worked for somebody my whole life. Right. I'm not going to do this. But, you know, you you, you ask I, my my old president of my company is like one of my mentors. And I would be like, dude, you were talking oh, one day. And I was like, what's the difference between me and you? Your goal. I'm sitting here like I want to make four hundred thousand dollars this year. And your goal is you want to make 40 billion. <laughs> so my brain was like. If I cut you and you cut me, we just, we bleed the same blood. What's the right. difference? Right. There is no difference. It's just what you choose to do. So my brain was just like, okay, I got this post to note. Let's just rock with it and see where it goes. And like the crazy part about it is weird to be in the place where you work for somebody and the owner of the company supports your dream. Yeah. That is a whole nother level. And I all, that was the one thing I saw. I said, I always want to do that for the people that work with me or the people that work around me. So everybody that works, you know, at the kitchen or for cooking with you, like we're family and it's a, that's our thing. Like if, if one, we all make it, that's it. Like there is no more. And it's a launch pad. Like June 3rd was the first day we opened. And then I opened and didn't even have like a ribbon cutting ceremony until August because I was like, you're not about to have the mayor come up in here. <laughs> I'm not together. So y'all gonna go ahead and wait in Jesus' name so I could figure out what to do. And it was so like it was just it was it was so good. Like it was good. So it's been our first year, June 3rd was our first whole year. And I was like, I was like, dang, I'll ride by it and be like, that's that's my building. 
<laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't seen this building, like you guys, oh, Jenny uh, LaFilm says, love it. Q, I would love to have you on our TV show, Startup. Um, hey, Jenny. That's all. Do you know Jenny? No, I love it. I was excited. You know, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, get super excited. Like that's a national show and it's a super a super awesome connect. So um we'll make sure we we set that up. But um uh if you go to this to this place, like it feel to me it feels like it feels like Martha Martha Stewart meets Oprah Oprah Winfrey. Like it's like this it's like this perfect marriage of energy and positivity and and conversation mixed with like Cooking demonstration, like it's like cool. yeah, it's 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 amazing. So I tell people, I'm the Mary Poppins of Midtown. Yeah, <laughs> like Mary Poppins Midtown. Like I gotta hold it down. So how it's, did you how did you end up finding the, the the perfect spot? Like how did that come about? When I tell you, so the one thing I am good at is being like I don't want to say consistently. I don't say annoying. I email Sue Mosey is like over Midtown Detroit. Midtown is like such a cool area. It's just like, it was a place where, if I were to be perfectly honest, when I was a kid, like a baby, my mama, rest her soul in heaven, my mama took us shopping on that block. So we would go to the dime store. It was like, that was the spot. She it was like full up. circle for you. Oh, I'm over here like, what? <laughs> she used to get her church hats, go across the street to go to Roby Shoes to get her church shoes, you know, for the, you know, all the saints. Man, when I tell you, when they, I found out that they were trying to like, it was like, we're going to revitalize Detroit and Midtown is going to be next. I was like, there is no way I'm right. not going to be a part of it. Like, I'm going to email Sue Mosey probably for two, three months every day. Hi, how are you Sue. doing? Hey, how everything's doing? No, oh my God. No response. Because I know they're psycho busy. She don't yeah, know me. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. don't know me. You just don't know I'm good. You just don't know it yet. Yeah. You're going to find out. Email her every day. Hey, how you guys? Here we were on Fox 2. And I was getting on Fox 2. Like, I wasn't asking to go on Fox 2. They were just like, oh, my God. This is so cute. <laughs> you right. Try to do a demo. And now we family. They like every other Monday. Just show up, girl. But like, right. I emailed her every day. I was like, here's a link. I was like, here's a link. Can I get a meeting? Can I get a meeting? And she was like, you know what? Let's have a meeting. That's dope. Listen, when we had that meeting, in the meeting, when I tell you the bosses that move, they don't be in meetings for hours. They don't take hours. I hate long meetings. I literally, I'd be like, you could have emailed me. Right. This is like a five, right. ten. We were in the office for 15 minutes, not even. And it was like, this is great. They're not doing this in the city of Detroit. It's not. This is not what they're promoting in Detroit. Um, nobody's trying to do this. I want to help you. And I think Midtown will be a great place for this. And mind you, this is in a block. Like all the stuff that's on that block now was not on the block. This was when the block was like, no, it was dead. It just like abandoned buildings. Yeah. And people were like, Q, why do you want to go there? I was like, listen, God said this is my this is spot. And she took me to a few different spots. You already and seen that, did you? Like, I was like, no, this is it. This is it. And it was too big. And I was like, I don't need all this space. And I don't think people understand, like, it's okay. Why? My sister, please stop. Go away. Okay, sorry. <laughs> like, stop. Um, but the thing about it is you, people will give you this big space. And I don't think people understand the power of no. Like, no is a complete sentence. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I don't need that much space. Can we cut it in half, though? Like, can I get it if you cut it in half? And yeah. It's like, yeah. And was like, okay, here, let me help you. You need some funding? Let me tell you all the people that you need to go to. I end up, she ended up getting me in a meeting with Ray Waters. I was like, Ray Waters, I've been emailing some folks on your staff for months too. And he was like, hey, what you need? First hundred thousand dollars, no questions asked. Here, what wow. I didn't even have. Do you hear me? <laughs> it's like, what? So my brain is like always like if when it's when it's when it's when God is telling you to do something, you actually follow in the path. Like when you're on your right path. Even though it may seem complicated, that they line stuff started lining up. I go there, he was like, "Fine," and I'm like, "Great, I got a hundred thousand dollars. I don't know what to do with it. I'm not touching it because people don't understand. Like when you get these grants or you apply for these loans, you don't get it until yeah. you everything is together." Right. I walked around with a hundred thousand dollar loan that I had couldn't touch. I ain't touched like of an idea. So your ideas are really real. That's 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 brain work. Then they were like, right. you know, start going to some of these meetings. Every place they sent me, I was like, "Hi." 
hi, I'm cute. How are you? I want to teach you how to eat to live. And they're like, oh my God, where'd you come from? I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> this is what I, I got. It. And I Invest Detroit helped me. BDF helped me. Like I went to all these different places and they held me down. And my final funding that I needed to get, that I couldn't get, I did a GoFundMe and I didn't want to do a GoFundMe because sometimes if you feel like, I don't want to say embarrassed, but you feel a certain way and you have to put all that to the side. Why like, you're asking people for help and we don't yeah. we don't really ask people for help like that. And I don't know why we have that mentality. Like, yeah, I don't know either. I'll be like, yo, I need help. What can yeah. you do? Like, yeah. but I had to learn that. And those were all the different levels of learning. I asked for the help and people were willing to share. And that was, you, you, there are some people who don't want to share information. Then there are people who are like, I know I'm supposed to help you. So let me help you. Right. No, and, and I, think, I mean, that's, I think that's a big responsibility of, of, of ours because yeah. I've had that conversation so many times. The, some of the biggest companies that you can think of have crowdfunded continuously to raise millions and millions of dollars yeah yeah we don't want to like we don't want to do that like we rather struggle it's like this is how business is being done all around you i don't know why it's not like we i don't know why we're afraid to talk about it yeah. like i'm pretty sure if the world was only meant to survive with one person and only you alone it would not be other people <laughs> <laughs> right. there's right. a reason you have other people but and it's a reason like you have to get you Get we have the connections. Use them. Utilize the collection connections because people are great. And it and you can't get better if you don't learn from other people. Like you don't. I don't know everything. So I like to keep the, a strong team around me of people who know things. Like our head chef, fire. She is a brainchild of the kitchen. I love her. She listen and listen. If she decides she want to open something up, I'm going to help her. Like right. period. Because that's somebody helped me. I'm trying to help everybody around me. I have people that understand organization because I, I don't think I'm the, I'm like a, a, I'm like a firecracker. Like my brain's like, <laughs> but I need people to be like, okay, let me grab this from Q. These are the things, and now let's execute. You have to right. keep a very good team around you that will execute and be okay with taking care of them. Like it's payroll is real. <laughs> right. It is. <laughs> no, payroll is real. It's every two weeks you'll be like, you gotta make this dream work because people gotta get paid. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. And all, all business owners talk about it. Like that's a, a big thing that you don't realize until you get in the business and realize like if I don't do this, people don't eat. Like you are yeah. responsible for, for livelihood. Lives. Their kids that you know, <laughs> like and you have and you wanna be a good leader. That's why I tell people I'm like. I'm not a boss. I just want to be a good leader and I want to be able to help them. But I want everybody to understand like we all have a voice and our voice, like everybody's voices matter. But for me, you know, I take all the ideas, I pray about them and we get it popping yeah. and it go down. It go down. <laughs> I love it. So I, I like, I like to ask about um, your, and I'm sure you, you, it was an easy transition for you because you were doing so many things without an actual physical location. But what was it like when COVID-19 hit and you had to close the doors to the restaurant? That never happened. It never, never happened. Closed it down. So <laughs> I'm gonna tell because I'm gonna tell y'all, like I if you would be looking at me like you say you say you be talking, say God told you one more time. I'll be like, listen, let me tell you something. He didn't tell me to shut my door. Right. I, I won't let y'all in. You don't gotta come in. But the whole thing is eat to live. How do I get? If my goal when the doors were open was to get people to come to the kitchen and have the experience, how do I get this experience to their house? Mm. Yeah. So in November of last year, I started doing meal prep. I did not want to do meal prep. Can I tell you I didn't want to do meal prep? I did not want to do meal prep with my entire being. But I'm that person. I'm clawing like, Lord, why? Why? I do it. I don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it. Mary, Pro temp Mary Sheffield, council lady, forced me to do meal prep. Okay. I started doing meal prep in November, and we got people enjoyed it. They're like, this is different. It's like very healthy. It's fresh. We started doing meal prep. So when COVID-19 hit, people that couldn't get to grocery stores still needed food. So we provided meals. We do meal preps where you can get them food seven days a week. We deliver it twice a week. Wow. Fresh food. You get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Wow. Fire, right? You got that. Then I knew I had access to produce. 
I get good produce. I get good food. Mind you, the kitchen serves vegans and meat eaters. It's not just for vegans. It's for right. meat eaters, but it's going to be a healthy serving. It's going to, it's a healthier version of what you need, right? Right, right. We got a marketplace. So you need groceries? We can give you your grocery. Fresh ginger, fresh turmeric, banana, okay. everything is there. And then we still kept serving lunch. I still kept serving lunch every day. When COVID-19 hit, on God, I should not shut the door one day. Wow. I had team members that needed to stay home because they didn't have a place for the munchkin, but they stayed home. And I'm like, okay, when we come back open, just come back. I right. got, I, we, we kind of like upgraded our staff, but what happened is what we learned is we learned how to operate more efficiently with a smaller staff. Right. Psycho. Not one day has we closed. And then I wanted to get the food to places. So I was calling like the day they were saying they were about to shut us down. I was already calling everybody. I was calling the health department. You know, I was saying help, help. Who do you I know? Who's going to feed the COVID patients? Who's going to feed the doctors and the nurses? They need to get help. <laughs> How do we do this? Right. What do we do? I have to be a part of the solution. And they made me a part of the solution. We fed the health department every single day. We fed some of the fire department. We fed the police department. Then we became a part of the feed the front lines. We were working every day. We in like oh, you were going harder. What? We were like more busy. Bro, I was like, <laughs> what? Jesus, what? How are we gonna do this? <laughs> it only it only makes sense for you. It only makes sense for you for it sure. Literally has been fire. We have not stopped. And even now they told us, you know, you can open your door. I am very protective of my, my family. Like my team is my family. So yeah. like, we haven't opened our doors to let people inside yet. I did put patio outside. You know, y'all can go and sit on the patio, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to keep everybody safe. We still practicing social distancing. So I'm always like, pull up. So they literally pull up. We do the order from the car. And they can still get everything that's on our menu. I love Bulk it. Catering, like, it has been a blessing from God. So I, and I don't take any of this for granted. Like no, I take absolutely nothing for granted. I am very grateful about everything that we do because for us, I feel like I'm a nurse. Yeah. We're dealing with every meal that we serve. People don't understand that. We are literally healing with every meal that we serve. We have people who are pre-diabetic patients who their A1C levels have reversed. The doctors are like, what are you doing? They like, I've been, I've been cooking with you. They like, keep on, keep cooking. Where's she going from? Who is she? Tell them to holler at me. Like we have pre-diabetic patients that are no longer pre-diabetic. Diabetic patients that are reversing. I'm not a doctor. Right. I follow the, the creator of all things gives me very good advice. I'm on the main line. doing what you did for yourself. I'm on the main line. You know what I'm saying? And I can do yeah. it around me and it's fire. That's so crazy. Um, Timothy said magnetic stage presence, ground up frameworks, viral videos, raw life lessons. TED Talks, audio book. Yes! <laughs> you have it. Can't wait to buy your audio book. You Receive. definitely got to do, you definitely got to start. Receive. Podcast. Received. <laughs> Received. Received. <laughs> yes. We are all waiting in anticipation of you, uh, you taking it there. But you got to, you got to free up some time because it's not like you are being pulled in every direction. Like, when it's time to sit through, I'm like, I have like, I created this thing called D&D &D Day. So I have a D&D &D Day once every week, one day every week, where I like, it's called Do Not Disturb. If you okay. email, you'll get an email that says, hi, it's my D&D &D Day. I'm with my family. Respect it. Respect <laughs> my boundary. Yes, yes, yes. I'll respond tomorrow. I love you. You're important, but not today. <laughs> right, right. So, because you have to, like, that's the one thing I learned. And I love, I'll be perfectly honest. Cause I'm transparent. I love therapy. I go see my therapist. Well, virtually every Tuesday, honey, you yeah. have to keep yourself together. Cause it's a lot going on. And yeah, for me, for sure. I'm, I'm all about how do I keep getting better? Like, how do I always make sure I'm focusing towards getting a better me, mm -hmm. better, 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 better. So my D and D day is from Jesus. I, mm -hmm. I absorb it. <laughs> right. Nobody don't expect to cook with you that day. Cause we're not cooking. You're not cooking that day. Y'all yeah. might order pizza. I don't know. It's not, it's not me. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad today wasn't your D and D day. Amen. I, Amen. I was able to squeeze in an hour um, with you. So everybody that's watching and everybody that's been watching, we are episode sixty six, and uh, you know, I'm trying to continue to get better and 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 make this more entertaining and bring more value. So if you are watching this episode right now, you're about to be a part of the first rapid fire question series that I'm going to be now asking um, every guest when we can fit it in. And 
Q will be the first person to participate with that. So I'm super excited uh, about doing this. And because it's brand new, I'm going to be reading the questions, but they're they're going to become like, you know, memory based questions. But I put a lot of thought because these questions are questions to make you tap into practical info that I feel like people will be able to immediately grab and use right now. Like not like, you know, let me get my business plan together and let me figure things out like right now. Right. Excellent. So execute so i don't want you to think long i'm going to give you like maybe 15 seconds at the most to respond but i want you to give me the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the tracks <laughs> and i know you're like you're I'm about to get it pretty much all you so get <laughs> ADD. I'll be like, huh? <laughs> <I'm scared. laughs> all right so first question when you think about the word successful who's the first person that comes to mind and why Ooh, if I were to be perfectly honest, my grandparents. Okay, I love it. And the reason why is because my grandparents, rest my grandma, I call her mama, mama heaven. You know, she was the one who told me like, yo, you're gonna be going all over the world. I was like, girl, how much morphine did they give you? Um, <laughs> she, they, to me, were successful because they had their faith on lock. Their faith was on lock, which is probably why I'm so faith driven. And mm -hmm. family was on lock. They taught me so much about family. They didn't do things for money. But I never not had. We weren't like the richest people. We were, you know, you know, started in the hood, got out the hood, but we still the family. The most important thing for us was family. So to me, that's what 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 makes you successful. Are you taking care of your family? Where's your faith at? Dope. Dope. I love it. All right. Next question. What's your favorite book or podcast or thing that that teaches you? I, you want to be honest? I, I all honesty here. I'm a saint. I love my Bible. The Bible. I tell the Bible. I tell people all the time, like you don't read your. We don't like to read the manual. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, we start talking about Bible. People want to get all political and they want to say all kinds of stuff. Like I don't really care what anybody says. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> but for me over here, every lesson, whether it is business, family. Home relationship, it's all in the manual. You just have to look for it. Most of the time, nobody when we buy new pro stuff, we want to put it together before we even read the manual. That's why we lack. You don't say we lack, we you don't say my people perish because we super smart and we know everything. It's because we lack knowledge because we don't want to go look for it. Right. Love it. The Bible. What's your what's your favorite? I'm sorry. What's your favorite? What's your favorite movie? I want an everlasting gobstopper. Willie Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, the original one. Ah, <laughs> I had a feeling you might say something like that. Willie Wonka. That's so funny. Willie Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. What, what about Willie Wonka do you did you like the most? Just curious. I, I, I think I like I'm a, I'm always about the journey. Yeah. Like you go through I am. I love the journey. And like I'm I tell people all the time, like I'm excited. I'm a Toys R Us kid, okay? I'm yeah. two years old in my heart. <laughs> Forever, okay. That's why I'm gonna always be young because I'm two years old. Yeah. The journey of the the kid that went through, he had a because sometimes it makes you feel like it's me. Like they were like not the richest people, but they were their family was it was golden. Their family was golden. Like they loved each other, and all he wanted to do was be able to take care of Pa. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, and he had to go through the journey. Like the chocolate factory was super dope, but everything that everything that looked good ain't good for you. Right. That's right. life. Like it was really like a journey through life from a child to an adult, but we didn't know it because it was just really walking the chocolate factory. But the journey was fine to me. I love it. Um what are what are what are some routines that you do every single morning? <laughs> every single morning. The goal is my new goal is to try to get up at 5 30. It's not real. Um, but it happens, but I don't know. Uh Every morning, the first thing I do when I wake up is I read and pray. And like, it's like, read my Bible and pray. Cause I'd be like, okay, God, what you want me to do today? Cause yeah. I'm here to do it for you, what I'm supposed to do. So I read, pray, whatever I get, it's like a devotion. I do my devotion. And then the next thing um, I've been doing is getting better at fitness. So I've been trying to work out. Um, but while I work out, I talk to my assistant. So I have a virtual assistant. She's straight fire, but she's in Kentucky. But like I'm working out and she on FaceTime and we're talking about what I got to do for the day to get myself organized. <laughs> Dope. multitasking and then Dope. um i usually try to get ready to go uh to the kitchen nice all right two more questions uh, what, what would you if you had to do if you had to do a ted talk 
And this is a TED talk to tell the world something um, that's going to make them better. What would that TED talk be about besides food and eating to live? In reality, if I were to do a TED talk, I would probably be telling people um, to fall forward, like fail forward. Because I think we fail and we think that's it. But like, no, it's really like that was a lesson. Stop looking at it. It would be like failing forward or like perspectives. Because I tell people all the time, like, I don't, I don't, I don't got to do this. I get to do it. I could not. So I perspective to me is a very big, I'm very big on like the perspective. Me too. Me too. Yeah. I love that. All right. And the, and the final question is when people talk about you yeah. and you are, and you are not there, what is it that you hope they are saying about you? That I am, I'm a like, I'm like a light. Like no matter where I go, I want to be a light. I do. I'm that person. Cause I mean, I told you I'm faith babe. So like, I'm always like, Hey, my own purpose here is to make sure I bring more people with me. You know what I'm saying we all gotta, we gotta succeed together. So I'm hoping I'm a light, the same light that I feel like God or Jesus is to me. I want to be that light to other people. So I'm sharing. So that's, you know, the sunshine. I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> and, um, I feel that, like I told you at the beginning of the conversation, like when I was preparing to talk to you, it was like, man, I got to get my energy up to me <laughs> because, like, she bring it. Like, you always, you always bring it. Like, you never ever what let me. <laughs> um, before we wrap up, and if you're watching, we're gonna be wrapping up in like the next five to ten minutes. So get those questions if you if you have any. Um, I like to just finally kind of get your perspective on everything that's happening in the world right now, and oh. uh, you know, since um, you know, for the last probably two weeks, we've been watching marches and and perspectives on on race and and injustices and i just like to i like to know what q thinks in a nutshell about everything that's happening honestly and number one i think it sucks because who we're here because i mean in, in my head we're all here because we have a purpose there's a purpose and in, in, in my head wow all this is going on it really sucks it makes me mad it makes me angry because everybody's like you know q's so nice She's never going to be mad. She's never going to. It's a lie. Okay. I think, people, like, I think they feel like she loves Jesus. So she's not going to get me like, hey, I'll set it off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but my first thought is like, what are you going to do? Like now is not the time for people to talk. Right? And you be a lot of people that want to have conversation. And that's all they have is a conversation. But what are you going to do? Right. Like if you're the person that goes to protest. Okay, protest. But what's next? We should, we, we get so stuck on looking at like, what's the next level? What is the next level thing? What rooms do we need to be in now mm -hmm. to make some change at the top? Mm -hmm. We're not down here no more. We we not. I, I you you hear me? You know we here. You, you know we're here. We we're not gonna play with y'all no more. So what's next? What, what are gonna be the rooms that you put us in so that we can help make the decisions? The decision makers can't be the people that that forget what the ground level was like. Right. And that's what I think happens a lot. Sometimes you get people that are like y'all so corporate that you forgot what it, you forgot what it was like. Willie Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. You don't yeah. know where I came from. So you have no clue what I went through. You have no clue what I've been through or what I've done because no you are, you have no perspective. So how can you make a life decision for me when you don't even have my perspective? Yeah. So I'm pissed off. I'm angry, but my brain wants to be bigger picture. Now I have to use my platform to make sure I do something different. Yeah. What's going to be what I do? And I think a lot of us, I don't want to, I don't want us to waste our platform by just putting out negative things. Yeah. What can we do different? What what is gonna make you so that you're not just a relevant Facebook memory that pops up? Right. What right. do you really do? Are you gonna try? You you wanna get in, in you want to get in political places since you don't like the people in political places? Is it gonna make you get out and vote? Are you gonna open your mouth? Are you gonna share your story or are you gonna keep quiet? Mm -hmm. Cause silence is not golden anymore. That's what I've been telling people like your silence is not golden. Yeah. Yeah. We see you. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I, what I want to and I, I love I love what you just said, your expression, but I think it's important for me to 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 mention this. Mm -hmm. The way you always frame my brain is telling me like I'm reading into that because what that says to me is that you recognize that your brain isn't you. Like you recognize that your brain is an organ that is absorbing life in the world and everything that's happening and some of the things your brain tells you you need to observe and you need to listen to but then other things 
you may need to throw in the trash can and discard because it is not the right course of action. Is it conducive? Mm -hmm. I don't think people read like is it, is it what is going to be the benefit? I yeah. a lot of things that people see, I don't think people understand cause and effect. Yeah. Because people like to just live in the moment, just the, the cause and effect. So yeah. what's going to happen when I do this? If I say these words, what is it going to do? Right. Am I? Yeah, because I don't think like words matter. Like I tell people all the time. I tell my kids, my husband, like speak life. If somebody tells something to me, speak life over me. Don't, don't, don't. Um, I don't receive negativity at all. Most of the time, if somebody tries to give it to me, I politely hand it right back to them. Like, right. <laughs> you can have right. that. I don't receive that. Like, you know, I'm very protective over and I don't think people understand like peace is not something that is free. No, peace is not peace is not free. Like even the Bible even tells you like you have to get your peace and maintain it. That means you have to focus on trying to keep your peace. Peace is not something that just comes to you. You have to understand like this is what makes this is my peace. And I want you to understand this is where I'm going to stay. You're right. not welcome in my bubble. Everybody's not welcome in my bubble. I love it. Um, uh, so Huna Bailey says, I love her energy. It's awesome. It's so powerful. She really makes you think deeper about what food you put in your body and to eat much healthier. I agree so much. Like I'm sitting here con contemplating um, a vegan lifestyle just off of this conversation um, because you just, you've made so many interesting points. Like you can't help but not think like, how can I be better by my food choices? You know? I mean, think about it. A lot of the food that we eat, we eat it because somebody taught us it. It's not because we, we know that it's good for us. Right. I mean, my family from South Carolina, they make black eyed peas and put like all kind of like, all, hog moths, all kind of like who, why? Like, why do we do that? Like, did anybody yeah. really go back and be like, like, no, that no, nobody, I, we're, not, we're not slaves anymore. Yeah. I'm not eating like a slave. You know what I'm <laughs> like, I can go to the grocery store and get veggies. You know, there's small things that like drive me crazy. Like, I know when I go into the grocery store in the hood, I can't get fresh kale. It's bad. Yeah. That bothers me. But yeah. I know for us to make the change in the hood, we have to start, the people that are in the hood have to start asking for it. Because if you ask for it, that's what they'll give you. But if you only ask for hot Cheetos, that's what they give to you. They're gonna give you, it used to be a quarter bag, now it's a dollar, right? Yeah. But that's yeah. about what they keep at the register. Until you start saying, why you don't have no bananas up here? Why I can't get fresh apples up here? When you start asking for it, it's supply and demand. People do what you ask for. And yeah. because we're not vocalized, we're spending too much time vocalizing the things that don't matter. Your life matters. Your health matters. Why are you not serving that? Why is that not available in the hood? Facts. Like super facts. Supply yeah. and demand. That's why you can offer me a pill instead of saying you might want to switch to a, a plant-based diet. Because me switching to a plant-based diet don't make you no money. This pill costs you $70. Why does medicine cost more? Why do people's kids can't get medicine and survive because it costs too much? That sounds psycho to me. That a yeah. child can't get medicine because it costs too much and we can't afford it. So since that's the real life thing, how about you tell me what I can eat holistically that can heal my child? Right. Why aren't we having those conversations? Well, they start today. They start with <laughs> 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 um, where where can people where can people get more information about you and the things that you that you do? If you just go to www.cookingwithq.com and it's Q U E, that's me. Um, cookingwithq.com um, is where like the blog and everything is. Or if you want to check out the spot for like some healthy food, it is the kitchen by cwq.com. Yeah. And uh, everything uh, social media, I, you know, I don't even know. It's just cooking with Q. You can find me. I was about to say, listen, you want <laughs> entertainment, you want healthy food tips, you just want a good laugh. Um, you definitely need to go and follow Q on all social media platforms and, uh, you know, learn how to eat better um, as an extra bonus to all the other stuff that she's going to bring you. And it's, easy. it's not even that hard. You don't do complicated stuff. My kids. Where, where, what's, the address, <laughs> what's the address for the uh, for the place? The Kitchen by Cooking with Q is at 6529 Woodward. It is in Detroit, Michigan. That zip code is 48202. We're literally on Woodward in between West Grand Boulevard, Milwaukee, and Midtown Detroit, and it's pretty awesome. Yeah, you, you have to go check out this vibe. Like, probably one of the dopest vibes uh, in Midtown. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, thank you so much for spending an hour with me. Um, excuse me being in my car, but, you know, we had to make this happen. Like, 
this this conversation had to happen. So by any means necessary. I'm excited. So I appreciate you for having me. Thank you, and thanks everybody. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, for, for sure. Go enjoy the rest of your day. I'll be talking to you real soon. Okay, later, Gator. Bye. Right. Bye bye. <laughs> All right. So that was. Oh my goodness, such an unbelievable interview. Um, I'm so serious. Go check out her spot. Uh, she says she's not opening the doors yet, but the outside is open. And as soon as she opened up the doors, you definitely need to go sit down, have a meal, um, let her explain to you what the meal is, what is helping, all the ingredients, um, because she comes with a wealth of knowledge. And um, also she's just a great person and great um, energy to be around. So um, super dope having her on the show. Um, sorry again for the environment. I'm sure you don't really care that much, especially when we got such great guests. Uh, they are the main focus, but we had to get this conversation done. So I'm here at practice watching my son train. Um, that's going to be wrapping up here pretty soon. So I'm going to go ahead and go join me tomorrow um, for another great conversation with Brianna, Brianne White, who is a super dope photographer amongst many other things. And uh, I can't wait to have the conversation with her. Uh, that That'll probably happen around 12 p.m. But uh, we're going to get you that information for exactly when to tune in. So um, thanks again, as always, everybody that joined in, chimed in and helped me uh, make this conversation go. Um, my name is Robert Courtney. This is episode 66. And these are conversations to keep you going. All right. We're going to talk to you guys. So peace.